Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome. I am so excited to be talking to you all today about how to market in times of uncertainty, because let's face it, that is where we all live and have been living for quite some time. So I'm going to give you some foundational tools to make sure that your marketing is really strong and lands, because let's face it, we are in a very noisy digital universe right now. Uh, in fact, what we know is that where it used to take six to 12 touch points before someone could learn about trust and maybe convert into a customer. Now it's taking 16 plus touch points. And that's simply because the digital universe is so incredibly crowded. So uh, let's talk about it. All right, first of all, why do you care what I have to say? Probably important to start there. My name is Laurel Mintz. I'm the founder and CEO of Elevate My Brand. We are a digital and experiential marketing agency located in lovely Los Angeles, California. And I've been running the agency for over 12 years. And we've worked with over 250 brands. You can see some of those blue chip global brands here like Facebook, Zendesk, Paw Patrol, Sprinkler, Verizon Digital Media Services. Um, I do have a JD and an MBA. I, I am a lawyer, but don't hold that against me. Uh, and what I really love to do the most is have these kinds of conversations, ensuring that you really get how to make your marketing work for you. You can see some of my other accolades here. I won't bore you with it. Uh, just know that I have been in this universe for quite some time, both on the nonprofit and for-profit side. And of course, uh, you can see I've got some, some publications as well that I participate with. Some of the brands we've elevated so you know we are legitimate in what we do and who we do it for. Uh, you can see some of the biggest brands in the world, some small startups you've probably never heard of, and everything in between. And the truth is, is that marketing is fairly similar across all of those um, kinds of brands. It's about consistency and it's about a cross-channel conversation, right? An omni-channel conversation. So that's really tip number one is if you are focusing too much of your effort in one category, for example, social, it's really important that you pull back and have more of that 30,000 foot view on your brand so you can see how all the different pieces of your marketing really fit together. So there's probably lots of agencies uh, or marketeers out there that will tell you that there is a silver bullet or that they can get you on the first page of Google. You know, people try and pitch you all kinds of, uh, you know, marketing black hat tools. But the truth is, is that those will never have a lasting effect for your brand. So the tips and tools I'm going to give you today will help you understand how to build a strong brand from the foundation up. All right, here's what we're going to get into. Here's the agenda. Staying profitable during COVID-19. Uh, COVID-19, now what? What are we supposed to do at this point? And those are two articles that I penned at the beginning of this pandemic because I knew that this was going to be a concern. And I also knew that we weren't coming out of this anytime soon. We saw a very similar um, downtick in, in the economy in 2009, right when I started my business. And what we saw then and what we are seeing now are the businesses that stayed in it to win it uh, were the ones that had a much easier time getting out of it in the long run when everything turned back around. Now, obviously, this pandemic is bizarre and so much bigger and uh, worse than what happened in 2019 with the housing bubble and stock market crash and all that. But it's the principles that really do still hold weight. Um, so we're going to talk through that and we're going to talk about branding 101. I'm going to give you a couple of exercises for you to do on your own. Uh, and then we're going to talk through things like tagline development, audience personification, and we're going to end with uh, a couple key takeaways. So we have a lot to cover in a very short period of time, but you can see the quote on the right hand side here, F-I-O-G-I-D, figure it out, get it done. And that is exactly what we are about to do. Are you ready? Let's do this. All right. So. First and foremost, how do we stay profitable in a global pandemic? As I mentioned before, we saw this in 2009 and people frankly get super freaked out. And when they get freaked out, what is the first thing that happens? They pull out their marketing and advertising dollars. They try and cut their expenses because maybe the money's not coming in like it used to, maybe you're acting out of fear. But what we saw then, again, as, as uh, we are seeing now, are those people that stayed in it to win it and even doubled down on digital spend, I don't care if it was $100 or $100,000, those were the brands that really were able to continue capturing more market share. And when you think about it, it really just makes sense, right? So let's say you have 10 companies that are all spending money on digital ads, nine of those companies or eight of those companies pull their ads out and pull their marketing dollars out. 
What does that mean? That means that not only are you going to be able to reach a broader audience, but that cost per click is going to go down because there's less competition in the space. So if you think about it from a logical perspective, pulling your budget out of marketing and advertising isn't the last thing you should do. This is an amazing opportunity for you to capture new eyeballs, and exactly that's exactly what we're seeing now with brands that are starting to come out of it. Uh, getting more social. I, you guys are all here for a reason. I don't have to tell you this one, but uh, you know everything is digital in this day and age. As I mentioned in the beginning of this conversation, that 16 touch point uh, kind of customer journey, uh, online, digital, social specifically, is one of the best avenues for you to touch your audience. It's a low cost opportunity, but you also have to think about both sides of the coin. And by both sides of the coin, I mean organic. So what kind of creative are you putting out there? What is landing? How often are you posting and on what channels? And then the same thing has to go for the paid side. So oftentimes brands will come to us and they are like, Laura, I've been spending all this time and money and effort making beautiful pages, beautiful feeds, beautiful stories, and my audience isn't growing. And my, my answer or my question to them is always, well, what does your paid social budget look like? How much are you spending to get new eyeballs to your brand? And typically what we do is a bifurcated advertising approach. The first piece of that advertising has to be all about driving awareness, awareness and visibility. And that's another important takeaway for this conversation is that uh, marketing is not transactional, right? Transactional is the sales side of the business. Marketing is relationship driven. So it's much more, um, you know, having conversations, providing value, building network, all of those uh, consistent touch points so that someone can know, like, and trust your brand. And then when they're ready to make a purchase decision in your category, you have now created what we call top of mind awareness, right? So you're the first person that they think of when they're ready to make a purchase decision within your category. And ultimately, and that's all good marketing is. It shortens the time from first point of contact to close of business. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And then, of course, the last point here, putting your people first. I cannot stress this enough, and you will see this across all of our marketing materials. The human element, uh, humanity is so critical right now. And the brands that really had that human first uh, kind of branding messaging were the ones that really won in the early days of the pandemic. And I think this is still critical and important. Let's face it, most of us are still not fully uh, vaccinated. We're still working from home. We're still not in the universe like we were before. And so we still crave that superhuman connection. So again, that comes back to that transactional versus um, that comes back to that transactional versus uh, relationship driven conversation. All right. Uh, content is still queen. Obviously, I'm a, I'm a lady, so I think content is queen, not king. Um, but there are so many more important things that you can be doing through content marketing to talk to your audience. And the biggest tip I can give you in this on this side of the marketing coin is that Whenever we have brands that come to us and they say, Laura, I just don't have budget to spend. I need to figure out uh, how to make my marketing land or how to reach more audience with less spend. Content marketing is always the conversation and direction we take them in because it's an owned conversation, right? So the other important piece here to note is that video content is also a critical piece. So it may be that you're writing blog content consistently, but for some reason, you're just not seeing the traction. And that's because of two things. One, again, you're probably not doing it consistently. Uh, and two, you really should be thinking about creating vlogs, video blogs that live on the YouTube platform. And why is that? Most people don't know or don't think about YouTube as a search engine. But aside from Google, it is the second largest search engine in the world. So if we're creating a volume of video content consistently, playing it on the YouTube media player and integrating that player into your website's blog page, and then translating that content into written form, you're now tapping organically into both organic, uh, both of the largest organic search engines in the world. So that's Google and YouTube. And again, that is pre-ad spend. That is only on the organic side. Now, of course, you want to make sure that you are 
using good keywords and uh, both long tail and short tail keywords as well as semantic web. So how people actually are typing in search function in a, a more sentence structured way, because what that shows you is that that is what a majority of the people in your category are looking for. So there's a lot more to unpack there. We don't have all the time today, but I do want to make sure that you understand that video content is so, so critical. It's a much easier medium to produce it, in my opinion. And then you can translate it so you can tap into both of those huge search engines. And that's where the marketing gold is. But then on top of that, if we can add some dollar spend to pushing out that content and on social uh, advertising or on Google, that's when you see a real bang for your buck. And then, of course, the last bullet here is about converting, not canceling, making sure that you're still in it to win it, that whether it's a cocktail event or a lunch or a happy hour or a coffee or a larger production, that you're thinking about how to um, expertly create that universe in a digital capacity. We still have the need to network. We still have the need to connect for business development purposes. We still have the need to connect with our customers. So think about how to convert into a digital experience and not cancel your events. Now, we're you know far past a year into this pandemic, so I hope that that is a no-brainer for you, but of course, if any of these are uh, something that you want to dig into more, please feel free to email us, laurel at elevatemybrand.com. Uh, we've got a great team that can help uh, walk you through some of these points as well. All right. So we've been in COVID for a while. Now what? Now what do we do? Like We've been in it. We know what's happening. But believe it or not, we've actually found a silver lining. So the first point here is that ostriching is slowing down. You know what an ostrich does, right? They stick their head in the sand and they wait for the for you know the lion to pass or whatever. We saw this and we kind of denoted that this was what clients were doing, customers were doing. They were putting their head in the sand <clears throat> and pretending that the pandemic wasn't happening. This is going to be over in a few weeks, a few months, whatever. We're not going to do anything. We're just going to hope and pray that this passes. Obviously, we know that that did not work. Um, so now we're seeing that people are like, oh, got it. This is a long haul issue and we need to stand up and stand into our marketing. And uh, so we're seeing ostriching slowing down. Uh, E-commerce brands are crushing it. If you have a direct to consumer model, uh, both on the uh, product or service side, uh, there is a huge opportunity for growth here because simply this is where people are and good marketing meets them where they are and people even generationally people who would not typically buy online are figuring out how to use those channels and platforms and then of course much like that human element from the last article kindness is truly winning here uh, those stories of human and interaction human kindness those are the ones that really land and get a lot of reshares and comments and engagement and then the last piece is about planning with purpose so even if your revenue is down, even if you're scared to spend marketing dollars, this is a great opportunity for you to slow down to go faster. And what I mean by that is really taking this time as a blessing to, to intentionally plan your efforts, right? So whether that is uh, taking courses like this on uh, how to really execute beautiful marketing, or whether that's getting Google certified, or whether that's looking for a new job in marketing, whatever that might be, planning with purpose is really a great opportunity <clears throat> that we don't often get, right? We don't often get an opportunity to slow down and be very, very thoughtful about who we are and what we want out of our marketing. So I actually think this is a really beautiful moment in time that we're never going to get back. So use it wisely. Okay, what is branding? Let's start with the kind of 101-ish, right? Uh, branding is not telling people who you are, it's managing what other people say you are. And so I would love to hear your perspective on what these brands mean to you. So when I say the word Nike, what comes up for you? Usually it's something like, just do it, sports, powerful, swoosh, you know, all of those things that are associated with the Nike swoosh brand. When I say BMW, what comes up? I get a lot of uh, ultimate driving machine, luxury, yep, all of those things are exactly what those brands have built, and it's a reflection back of their audience. So I encourage you to start with ensuring that you've built a really strong foundational brand, and here's how we're going to do that. We're going to define your brand. So this is your uh, exercise or homework 101. Define your brand. What are some words that describe your brand? And this is an activity that we do with all of our clients, and we call it word vomit. 
So here's some examples of uh, some words that may or may not relate to your brand. Some of these relate to my brand, others don't. Um, so whether you're loud, trendy, luxurious, conservative, inspiring, edgy, take some time on a whiteboard or on a Word doc, whatever it might be, <clears throat> and do this word vomit exercise. Get all of these words down on paper and really think through what your, your brand represents, right? Um, and the other thing I want to mention when you do this exercise is that we're using everything we're talking about in a multitasking capacity. So even if you don't love this exercise, even if you've done this exercise before, what I want you to think about is now taking those words, defining them for your brand, and maybe using those as social types, right? So we're using this activity, this exercise, to ensure that you are developing a strong brand and communicating your brand values, your kind of voice, and who you believe you are to your audience. And then when you see the level of engagement on those posts, on those words, you can see that, your, um, that those words actually land or don't resonate with your audience. So again, think about how to multitask the you-know-what out of everything that we do. Uh, so this is a brainstorm breakout moment. Uh, I think we're not doing breakouts in this conversation, but I'm going to tell you to do this uh, on your own, five to 10 minutes. Uh, you can even time yourself. If you're not comfortable with doing this, have a cocktail, have a glass of wine, uh, do what you need to do to make this a really fun activity. And that's another really important kind of takeaway that I want you all to understand from today is that Marketing should be fun. This is like part of the best part of building a brand. This is the best part of the creative process. So don't take it too seriously. So this is your homework. Break, break out and do your word vomit exercise, five to 10 minutes max, and then use those effectively in your socials. All right. So now we've built this word vomit exercise. Now it's time to take some of those words and build out your tag. So a tagline or a slogan is a sentence that clearly and concretely communicates what you do and how you do it. So it should resonate instantly. People should understand exactly what you do. So Elevate My Brand is a digital and experiential marketing agency. We used to have a tagline that said, uh, we are the structure behind your creativity. So that really communicates the operational process driven piece of our business, but also that we are very creatively driven and we work with other creatives as well. The tagline piece is that short, memorable sentence or sentence fragment. It could be three of those words that we did in the last exercise that really resonate with you uh, and your audience. And here is a really exciting opportunity for you to share and get feedback in, in real time. So what I would suggest you do is come up with two or three taglines that you feel are strongly communicating your values and that are me that's memorable for your brand. And then crowdsource it. Go to your social channels and ask people for feedback. So I would do something like this. Hey, guys, Laurel here, trying to figure out what our next tagline is going to be or our slogan. I would love your opinion since this is all about you. Here are the three we've, we've created. Vote below and tell us what you think. And then not only are you getting real feedback from your real audience, but you're also creating what we call brand evangelists. So people who are super committed to the development uh, and evolution of your brand, because let's face it, if you pick uh, tagline number two, and that's what a majority of people in your social network have picked, and then they see that you've taken that tagline and used it on your marketing materials, they see themselves reflected in your brand and they have that very emotional draw, emotional pull. They think, I had a part in building that brand. And that's when you build amazing brand evangelists that want to shout your brand from the rooftop. And, uh, and that is like marketing goal. So make sure, again, that you're using the word vomit exercise to create taglines and then crowdsourcing them. So you're using social to get real-time feedback to, to know, based on some data points, that what you're doing and what you're saying is heading in the right direction. OK, <clears throat> I'm going to move kind of quick here because we have a short period of time. but. Here are the next questions that we always answer with our clients. Who, what, where, when, why, how? Seems super, super simple, but these are six essential questions that will help us pare down your messaging and help us get to things like your mission statement, your vision statement. I would tell you again, we're gonna do another, we're gonna have another breakout moment, and I would suggest you do this as homework assignment number two. If you haven't guessed by now, I love homework assignments. My mom was a teen, has been a teacher for like 45 years, so I think it just comes intuitively. The most important piece here, in my opinion, is your why statement. And if you don't know Simon Sinek, start with why. 
highly recommend that you uh, you find his website and sign up. He sends you these great weekly emails. And your why is that emotive, that emotional tie that really hooks in your audience. So some of these may or may not be applicable to you. So the where might not be um, important. If everything is digital for you, the where might not be important in terms of how you deliver your service or product. Um, so don't let these stump you. Just again, do this kind of word vomit exercise where you're 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 really focusing in on each of answering each of these questions. So we're gonna do this other breakout section for 10 minutes, answer these six questions. And uh, if we don't have time to do a breakout here, I highly, highly recommend you do this as homework assignment number two. Moving right along. Okay, now it's about your elevator pitch. So now you've created this word vomit exercise. You've done the who, what, where, when, why, how. Now it's time to truncate that messaging into a 30 second elevator pitch. The thing that we hear all the time is these long, drawn out, this is who I am, this is what I do, this is who I do it for, blah, blah, blah. And like, I'm telling you, after 10 seconds, you lose someone, right? So the unfortunate truth is that we have the attention span of a net. We are, we're so inundated with messaging, we're so inundated with marketing messages that you've got to really hook someone pretty quickly in order to, uh, to get them excited about your brand. So you've got 30 seconds. I would take a piece from each of those who, what, why, when, how exercises and truncate those into one or two set sentences. Probably less than 30 seconds is actually the timing on this because you wanna make sure that you are evoking questions, that you're, you're creating enough interest that someone is responding back to you and saying, huh, I might be interested in that. What does that actually mean? And how would we work on something like that together? So it evokes that conversation and gets that, those creative juices flowing. The next piece and really the last piece we're gonna focus on today is about audience personification. So now you've built your brand, you know your messaging, you're very clear on who you are. Now you have to understand who you're speaking to. So this is the most important foundational piece in developing your customer personas. And what I want you to do again is get inside your customer's mind because what we believe our brand is is not necessarily what the brand is reflected in terms of your actual audience. So, you usually have a primary, secondary, and tertiary market. I want you to get, again, uh, either do this on a whiteboard or on a Word doc, and really draw out person one, person two, person three. Give them a name so that every time you are creating a piece of content, every time you're creating an asset, a creative asset, you're reflecting back your, um, your uh, customer, who you think your customer is, and saying, would Rebecca like this? Would Jennifer really respond to this? Would Michael get this? Um, so everything that we're doing here, while it sounds kind of floofy and creative, is actually acting as an, a hypothesis um, that we're going to be testing against, right? So when we're doing things like social advertising, you can drill down by demographics. And of course, each of these personas should be uh, demographically focused. But even almost more importantly, you should be psychographically focused and targeting, right? So what are the reasons? What are the buying habits? What are the social channels? Uh, what motivates each of these people to make a purchase decision within your category? And then you can really think through that kind of problem solution set to develop creative and content that provides value and solves that problem. Whew, we moved fast today. I hope you guys got exactly what you needed from this. The key takeaways here is that really there is a silver linings, uh, silver linings playbook, right? There's a silver lining to what's currently happening. There's such an opportunity for us to slow down, be intentional about our conversations with our, um, our consumers and really redevelop and reimagine our brand. Knowing your brand is super critical because you have to, again, differentiate yourself in a super crowded market. So foundationally getting back to who you are as a brand, what makes you unique and different and what reflects uh, reflecting that against your audience is critical. And then, of course, trying to understand who you believe that audience to be is also absolutely critical. And, and we're going to do probably another one of these where we talk about the execution of all of these uh, in the digital landscape. But this is super important foundational information so that you can build a really smart brand that can elevate your message to your audience. OK. I know I've moved really, really fast here. So we have a thing called a mind map session where we take you, we take your brand, we talk through your specific marketing goals. 
we talk about your marketing budget and then we uh, we allocate that budget across the digital landscape. We give you some more detailed breakdowns of how uh, to execute within those categories. It's a super fun creative session and we're offering the audience uh, here today uh, a 10% discount. So if you're interested, uh, please reach out ASAP. We get super booked very far out for these because they're so fun and creative and they just really get your brand moving. So again, laurel at elevatemybrand.com. Uh, we hope to see you soon for a mind map session. And that's marketing in times of uncertainty. So building your brand from the ground up, making sure you're doing it in a really, really smart and intentional way. Thank you so, so much for your time. I wanna open it up for questions now.